exactly how I will correct you. That way, you have to follow through with it. My parents didn't need somebody to come here and tell them how to fix our family and stuff. to go to the Aponte family's house in Kentucky, um, I was kind of excited because the Aponte family has 12 children. Now, not every family could do 12 children well, but the Apontes do. I noticed from the very first minutes in that house that there was something special about the Aponte family. oldest Aponte children. They're adults, so they're either married or they're away at school, uh, things like that. So when I was visiting the Aponte home, there were only nine children at home at the time. I can't wait for you all to meet the Aponte family. There's Jose. He's the dad. and He really gets his role as a father. Jackie the ultra-organized and caring mother. And Naomi, age 17. Jasmine, age 15. Ricky, age 13. Jacqueline, age 9. Abraham, age 8. Ella, age 5. age three, and little Olivia, age one. Well, you know, we were, I was nervous. I was nervous and I was, um, I wasn't sure at that point that, you know, that I want this lady in the house. We were holding to find um, a better way to uh, deal and um, strengthen in our relationships with our children. Um, but I, I honestly don't think we expected anything other than we were hoping that we had the hope that something will be there that we could grab onto um, and we will be able to, um, to just make something better. We briefly met you at, at the conference and it just felt right. And so there was something about what we heard you share um, in the theme of self-government, which we've always believed that we needed to teach our children. I just don't think we knew how. Despite the larger than average number of children, the Aponte family is similar to most God-fearing American families. Kids like playing toys and computer games and sometimes don't get along. I'm impressed. This family, at the very beginning, I knew they were an incredible family anyway. They, they got the book, they listened to the classes, they made mission statements and um, 
They put them on business cards so that all their kids could have them. They are a family-centered family anyway. They're very spiritual. They're very humble. They're very loving. They love everyone. And so I got here, you know, on my way coming here, I thought, I wonder if I can even teach this family anything, actually. I wasn't sure if they would really need that much of my help. They have to know that the road is bumpy. It's like one of those dirt roads that has all the wash on it, and it just bump, 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 bump. That's what it's like. And so just plan on that for the next little while. It's going to feel like, I'm trying, but how come they're not trying? And your mom's going to be talking to you about, okay, no, no, no. And now we have to do this, and we're going to work on all of those problems. But after a while, you'll just know, oh, I'm going to say, okay, or I need to do this properly right now. Um, I need to be respectful. I need to look them in the eyes. And then you'll, your family will change. And it will feel like a different place, and you'll be on that super highway. But it'll take a little bit of time. It always does. You just have to be ready for that. It'll be work, and it'll really wear you out. But then after a while, um, it's not going to be so tired. You know, at the end of the night, we like, you know, we like look at each other. We like, what a day, what a day. You know, we made it to one more day. And you know, in our prayers, we pray at night that you know, Heavenly um, Father, please can you um, can you carry us, please. In the nest. Can you please carry us? Did you say? The low is heavy. And it's a lot of work. We're willing to do whatever it takes to keep our family together. Hopefully, by the time Alina comes around, we'll get it right.